My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to America. Other people want to make friends, I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach you, put it in context. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jimmy Kramer. Let's play again. Let's call it mercy and no mercy, as in market showing mercy towards some stocks and no mercy toward others. Why does this matter? Because today was a virtual mosaic day. A day where lots of stocks went their own way based on the whims of traders, not investors. Even as the Dow gained 31 points, this would be drop 0.12%. NASDAQ climbed 0.02%. So let's get right to it. We're going to start with the stock of Kroger, up 11% today. For ages, the market's been brutal in this supermarket chain, writing it off as an also ran. But today, Kroger had an nail speed. And mercy, mercy me, the company finally got it up after what feels like it's been guiding down for years. Just when everyone had started to give up on this one, fleeing from the stock because of competition from Costco, from Walmart, from Amazon, by Aldi, from Trader Joe's, I don't know all those. You know what? We get this incredibly bullish analyst day where management tells us that they're going to earn not 219. Not 220, but 230 to 240. The street was only looking for 219. Considering all the competition, that's extraordinary. And it makes sense that Kroger stock roared higher. When I spoke to CEO Rodney McMullen this afternoon, a true gentleman, by the way, he made it clear that many of his long-term initiatives that he's talked to me about for multiple years to win back customers and retain customers are now working, especially the restock Kroger plan. I know it sounds simple, but Rodney said they're telling the story about food. Kroger is food first, he told me, and he regards his company's strong brick-and-mortar presence as a distinct competitive advantage. They've had some success with their personal finance initiative, too, where they teamed up with one of my favorite banks, U.S. Bancorp. They've also developed a terrific consumer packaged goods advisory business that helps its consumers, its customers sell more product in the stores. Oh, and Kroger's are now rolling out its master brands fresh food initiative. You're going to see a lot about that in the coming days. I think it could be a big hit. McMullen told me, that there's tons of room for Kroger to thrive in the $1.5 trillion food industry. And after a hideous hiatus, the momentum has returned. Tons of mercy! On the other hand, no mercy for Twi- no mercy for Uber. Let's see my no mercy Uber chart. This is a- no mercy. I love this. You bet. Yes, this is the ride, Sherry. Okay, 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 that was not that, that was ill-advised. Okay, this is a ride-sharing company that reported a decent quarter, but it, um, it could have been a great one if it weren't willing to lose so much money on Uber Eats because food delivery has become the baton death march for everyone in this industry. The competitiveness of this delivery space has crushed all the, all the players. And unless someone blinks, like I have, because I have something in my eye, um, whether it's Uber Eats or Grubhub or Postmates or DoorDash, no one's going to make any money in this crummy, Armageddon-filled business. I think this was the quarter where everyone, including Uber, realized how devastating the gross margins, the whole delivery she-bang really is. It's not an industry, people. It's a bunch of guys running around with, like, stuff. I see him in my restaurant all the time. Guys picking up stuff. That's a, that's a business? Okay, I'll get in that. Now, th- th- that's one reason why Uber got slammed. Down 10% today. But I don't want to get too caught up in the fundamentals because the main reason is that the lockup on insider selling expires tomorrow. Oh, get this. There perhaps is as many as a billion shares will suddenly be free to trade. Hey, one billion. Given that the company seems committed to losing money in Uber Eats, I suspect that many of these investors with a cost basis below $25 will be eager to take whatever profits they can get and watch the stock go down from here. What the hell is that? Broke my nail. Now, Uber's promising that it will reach profitability in 2021. Bold claim. I just don't see how they can get there. Call me skeptical or skeptical if you're listening to Wilf today speak to Jamie Dimon. That said, even if you believe them, you should wait to see what happens after the lockup ends. Because right now, the market is showing Uber no mercy. 
Marriott International reported last night and immediately the stock shed more than 1% based on the headlines. What went wrong? Depending on which story you read, pretty much everything, forecast tepid, revenue per available room light, bottom and top lines both soggy, I figured the stock would get murdered, especially since Arnie Sorensen, the beloved CEO, has pancreatic cancer. But this morning, we get the conference call. It's downright solid. Mayor's taking market share, buying back stock, having good growth worldwide, even if North America's experience had to slow down in revenue per available room. But more important, we got good news. We got an update on Sorensen's health. The CEO, he told us, and I'm going to quote him, I've completed chemo, radiation, and immunotherapy over the last six months. Next step is surgery. I've been working throughout, and I am still getting in my morning runs, end quote. But those incredibly encouraging words, the market decided to show mercy, which is why this stock ended up rallying 2.7% today. We do not want an arnie list Marriott. He's too darn good. Arnie, you keep fighting. Then there's Starbucks. Not that long ago, this stock soared to 99 on acceleration, some st- same source sales, uh, but uh, both here and in China. Next thing you know, at a small presentation, Starbucks shaded down its near-term outlook, and it was hard to understand why, because they had just reported another good quarter last week. What the heck is going on here? This market is showing no mercy to traditional high-profile growth stocks because investors are banking on an economic rebound thanks to the most recent rate cut. If the economic, if the economy surges, the consistent growth of Starbucks looks a lot less enticing uh, compared to, say, the more cyclical stocks that can put up numbers that are huge during a renewed expansion. No mercy for Starbucks, even, had a, even though I just had a triple 50 cappuccino with skin wet, also called the Kramer, if you're ever on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Boeing, though, this morning, CNBC aired a stunning interview with Boeing's chairman, David Calhoun, led by Phil LeBeau with Becky Quick and Joe Kernan as backup. Boys, I'm proud of the network today on this. I mean, this was just some great stuff. Uh, Calhoun admitted his company had made mistakes. He told, Den- he told you CEO Dennis Mulberg is foregoing his salary until he writes the ship. He said the losses to the clients would be made good. He made it clear that they could have done a better job with the system. No kidding, but he did admit it. All this within the context of acknowledging Boeing's role in the two terrible 737 MAX crashes. The response from this market? Wow. What candor can do? It was a shower of mercy that sent the stock up 2.1%. Then there's Shake Shack. Shake Shack, the burger chain, reported a slight miss in same-store sales, fueled by a number of issues from problems with delivery because of new exclusive partnership with Grubhub. Are these delivery companies, I ask you, are these delivery companies, are they not the worst? They they're a blight! Now, if you're a restaurant chain with a high price earnings multiple, you can't even have a minor slip up, which is why Shake Shack stock got obliterated. It was down 20.6%. Verdict? No mercy. For other companies, though, this market can be quite forgiving. Lamb Research, LRCS, which used to be hated by the analysts at much lower prices, is now catching upgrades today. Hey, why? Because we're finally seeing the end of the free fall in price for DRAM and flash chips uh, and uh, the two basic building blocks of technology. Lamb makes the machines that you need to manufacture the stuff. OK, so when are they recommending the stuff? Uh, well, uh, there was a big, a big push today on it when the stock is up 100 percent already this year. Massive mercy. At the same time, here we go. You knew this was going to happen. The hangar, the thousands of dollar hanger that is used in my house for dirty Lululemon pants, also known as Peloton, reported this morning and put us some incredible growth with substantially stronger than expected sales and a much smaller loss than people were looking for. But that's the problem. This exercycle company, and in the end, it is exercycles. Even though it's got that screen and it's got my wife going, meh, it's still losing money. After, that's what she does. She, <coughs> and Ali and all those people. What is that? I know. Millions, period. Whatever. Listen to me. After a giant run-up before trading opened, Peloton gave back all during the conference call. I, had, I made my comments this morning saying it was run. I didn't listen to the conference call. Because in the conference call, they said they're trading profitability for hyper growth. That is the opposite of what this market wants right now. We don't want tuna with good taste. We want good taste in tuna. No wonder Peloton got clocked, down 7.6% today, 22 and change. Hey, you know what? Stock came at $29. No prisoners, no mercy. Suboptimal, 
Here's the bottom line. I like this mercy, no mercy game. I may play it again. I may, I may not even be done. Maybe even tonight. I don't know. Because it shows you exactly how capricious and arbitrary this market can be. It wasn't that long ago when traders loved high growth stocks and low value stocks. They wanted you to compromise. They wanted you to get rid of profitability and go for big sales. The crazy thing, at this pace, value will soon be regarded as expensive. And the growth stocks that I said that we showed no mercy toward, well, guess what? Unless we get a trade deal or the economy, the economy hits a roadblock, which point the money, what's it going to do? It's going to go right back into the growth names that they are showing no mercy to at this very moment. Mercy, mercy me. Where is Marvin Gaye when we need him? Hey, let's go to JP in Colorado. JP! Booyah, Mr. Kramer. Booyah. What are your thoughts on Prudential earnings yesterday? A company with single-digit PE paying 4% dividend, buying back stock and beating earnings? With high employment and steady Did you read GDP the downgrade? Growth. Did you read the downgrade this morning? Get a hold of that downgrade. It was hideous. We're going to have to stay away from Pru. Um, the downgrade was very, very effective in making me think that there's lots of worries. You might have just seen the last good quarter. Ah, mercy, mercy me. All right. Things ain't what they used to be, right? This market is a capricious one. Favorites will change, though, if the value keeps going higher and the growth keeps going lower. Oh, man, it's right. Americans are voting today in state and local elections less than one year before the 2020 presidential election. As worries still persist about foreign interference, I'm talking with the CEO of cybersecurity player FireEye. Seattle's protecting the ballot box. Then, looking for stocks that can offer a combination of capital gains and a good dividend, I'm revealing a few players that could pay in tonight's off-the-chart segment. Three buys! And uh, speaking of no mercy, Twilio said it got the math wrong on its full year forecast last week. Actually, it was more like the arithmetic. How does arithmetic go wrong when you got all those guys who are geniuses? Well, let's find out. I'm going to talk with the CEO. So stay with no mercy, Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.